right, the good folks at Lithium Pros, John Brady and his crew, sent us a 16 volt lithium battery. And we'll show you in a minute what the battery weighs, you'll be very surprised. But it's a very light battery, it's very durable, it's got a great holding charge in it, and it's got a quick rise time in it when you charge it up. That's why we're only running one battery. We feel that's all we need to run on this car, and it'll allow us to be able to distribute the center of gravity and load in the car a whole lot better. All right, you'll notice everything's located on the inside of the upper frame rail here, and the reason we do that is so that it keeps the electrical and the battery and everything protected rather than being on the outside of the car where in case somebody runs into us at, at a high, high rate of speed at the top end, which has been known to happen on the other car, on is why we go on off switch. Here's an item that we thought was really cool and slick, and it was some really nice machine work. We got this from Innovative Racing Components, Gary Tackett and Davey Jones, and it's actually a CNC billet on off switch lever that we're going to connect to a cable that we got from folks at JEGS and that'll be part of our on off switch. And it's a really nice product, we like the way it looks and it fits, fits really nice on the car. Steve Matusik and the folks at Aeromotive have designed a new fuel cell that has the fuel pump incorporated into the fuel cell which makes mounting, especially in a concealed area, a whole lot easier. And this fuel pump is actually designed to run fuel injection. So for our two carbureted 292 cubic inch motor, it's going to be more than sufficient enough to do what we need to do. And at Teal Race Cars, we put these in all of our cars now that we do. You'll notice that it has the return plus a vent and, a, and another accessory port. And then down here on the side, we put the, the port for the for the vent that'll go underneath the bodywork of the... This is a pretty seat. similar system. Actually, it's almost identical to what you would find in the Coco Camaros or the Cobra Jet Mustangs, um, something like that. It really, it's, it's a really basic system. I mean, there's nothing really that special about it. What we've done is simplified it by, by rather than having a, a fuel cell and then making sure it's sumped properly in an external pump and... Um, and the filters and all that plumbing, we've kind of taken it all and packaged it all inside the cell. So you can put the cell anywhere you need to in the system or in the car and then just run a, a simple post pump filter or regulator and a return line and you're good to go. What's different about this versus say the Cobra Jet um, is simply that yours is carbureted. So, but the pump and, and everything else stays the same. So we simply swap out regulators to a carbureted regulator um, same, you know, dash eight fuel line going up. Same, going back. I, obviously, being a, um, a two fours on the on the car, you know, we, we use a regulator, a four port regulator, that you so that way you can feed, um, you know, each of the float balls on each carburetor. But it all is just one simple system. Makes plumbing easy, uh, and it's it's affordable because it, you really limit um, all the unnecessary plumbing from the, you know, the you know, from the cell to the pre-pump filter to the pump to the post-pump filter and then on um, on up so um, it, it's a simple system just flat works and and um, you know should give you really good performance on the track which is what you're a little higher up off the frame so that it's easier to put the sheet metal along the bottom we don't have to make any extra holes or any mounting brackets and it works out pretty good now you notice the frame rail comes up above the fuel cell and the battery and the reason that NHRA really wants it done this way, and you really need to pay attention to that, is in case the car gets upside down up on a wall, it doesn't rip the fuel cell and the battery off the back of the car, creating a dangerous, hazardous situation. I have a military I station in Honolulu, Hawaii. My last year in 1970, I got out in 1970, and uh, I'd already figured I want to race. I'd already bought a bunch of parts on, through the mail and stuff, key pieces for a car back then. And uh, I got out in uh, San Francisco, and uh, when I got back to Texas, I went by Texas where I was stationed before Honolulu. 
and uh, I stopped to uh, see all my friends, I had all kind of local friends, and I done picked out the choice of three cars. <laughs> this is 1970. It had to be a Camaro, it had to be an early Corvette, it had to be a Chevy 2 station wagon. And I looked everywhere in Texas, I wanted to buy the car in Texas because all the cars, it's an arid state, and the cars are not rusty, and not messed up or nothing. So I found a perfect Chevy 2 wagon. Because the key to the thing back then was the, the, the tracks had no traction. And the actual limit on a modified car back then was a seven inch wide tire. And uh, <clears throat> for a seven inch wide tire, you need something with a shifted center of gravity and a high center of gravity. And a Chevy, if you ever look at a Chevy 2, it looks like it's got an altered wheelbase because the, front, the tire to the front bumper is only a few inches. It, if you look at it from the side, it looks like it's got an altered wheelbase. And that was the key to it. And the wagon was good because I could put all the weight in it high in the back. I actually had a, I actually had a roll bar made out of, run real heavyweight class, I had a roll bar made out of bar stock. <laughs> And I had a battery box that weighed like 150 pounds, and the battery was in the rear roof of the car. <laughs> and it worked, ended up working very well for me.